News across our border now, Zimbabwe heading to the polls next month, but growing concerns about a clampdown on political freedom in the run-up. In recent months, there have been numerous arrests of opposition leaders. And then last week, President Emerson Monangagwa passed the Criminal Law Codification and Reform Amendment Bill. Let's find out more from advocate Fadzai Mahere, who herself has been targeted by the government in recent months. She's a constitutional lawyer and spokesperson for the Citizens Coalition for change political party advocate thank you so much for your time we do appreciate it just tell us about this new law I understand it's called the patriotic act or something like that what does it actually restrict how could it be used in practice well uh, this is the latest uh act of tyranny on the part of Mr. Mnangagwa, who continues to clamp down on political freedom, as you say, and we've consistently stated that his regime is worse than Robert Mugabe, and they've turned Zimbabwe into a full-blown uh, dictatorship and an outpost of tyranny. Coming to this new piece of legislation, uh, Mr. Mnangagwa introduced what's commonly known as the Patriotic Act, which in effect is an amendment to the criminal code. It criminalizes willfully damaging the sovereignty or national interest in Zimbabwe. Now, the big question for any constitutional lawyer is what does that mean? The ambit and wording of this legislation is cast so wide that it could literally uh, catch anyone. The potential for abuse is so obvious and so open. But more fundamentally, it's unconstitutional. Uh, it criminalizes freedom of association, free associations, meetings, gatherings. And yet, Section 67 of our Constitution is very clear that every person person has the right to challenge the government in gatherings or in groups and to conduct meetings for that purpose. And so, uh, you know, we're extremely concerned uh, by this uh, repressive legislation, which comes uh, against the back backdrop of a broken economy. Zimbabwe's got the highest hyperinflation rate in the world. Uh, the continued incarceration of political prisoners, such as Job Sikala, Jacob Ngari, who and a number of uh, university students who were uh, jailed for alleged uh, protesting. We also have a situation where the election is just uh, over a month away and yet over a hundred rallies of the opposition have been banned. Uh, you know, there is political violence, especially in the rural areas. And so, you know, this is obviously calculated to send a chilling effect uh, to, to communities and to the society that if you speak out, you will be jailed. But even more fundamentally, the penalties uh, contained in this legislation are completely unconstitutional. Under our constitution, you can only uh, get the death penalty if you're a man between the ages of 21 to 70 and only in circumstances where you've committed murder in aggravating circumstances. Uh, you can't be sentenced to death, as it were, for damaging uh, the national interest of Zimbabwe. It's unconstitutional, whatever that means. Um, and so we, we, as citizens throughout the country, we are shocked uh, by this mm. latest repressive act. And I mean, this is against a context where it's already um, pretty difficult to speak freely. I think you... Um, have been in trouble recently, and I think it was over a tweet. Um, before we get into that, I mean, it, next month's elections, you'll be electing members of parliament, councillors and the president. Um, what does this patriotic act mean for opposition parties who want to hold a rally? Is it illegal? Well, I think what, what they're trying to do is you can't say bad things about the country, no matter how tyrannical uh, and dictatorial the government acts. Uh, you, you, you can't speak out against it, especially when you've got an international uh, audience. Uh, and so, you know, when we speak out, especially for uh, the opposition, we speak in a number of meetings, domestically and internationally, and where we effectively state the facts, uh, you know, everything that we say is driven by data uh, and is, I mean, we've got Job Sikala who's been in jail for over a year for a crime he did not commit. Bail is a constitutional right. He's been denied that bail. Uh, you've got uh, myself who was put into jail for tweeting. All of this points to repression that we've never seen. We never saw it uh, to this extent under Robert Mugabe, who, by the way, was the master of tyranny. And so when we say this at uh, various platforms, that is what they 
want to criminalize and silence. They say that we are embarrassing the country when we tell the truth about how bad Mr. Mnangagwa's dictatorship is. So what do you do now? As you say, it's a month to the elections. You are, even in this interview, saying to me things that could very likely get you arrested because you are criticizing the government to an international audience, which you say this Patriotic Act in particular is going to have a problem. How do you, as opposition uh, leaders, deal with this? What is your plan of action from here on in? Because I would imagine any legal challenge will not go through the process of the courts in time uh, to perhaps strike down uh, this act before the elections. Well, as the, the opposition, as the Citizens Coalition for Change under a broad coalition of citizens, we've said that we're going to deal with this politically. Uh, we require an overwhelming victory in the election of the 23rd of August, 2023. And so we are doing everything we can to ensure that we mobilize as citizens in rural, urban uh, communities throughout all the provinces of Zimbabwe to ensure that we win uh, decisively for change uh, in the upcoming ballot, because this is the only way we can remove Mr. Mnangagwa's dictatorship. The citizens are sick and tired of dealing with a government that's consistently at war with the citizens. Uh, you know, you never hear uh, them introducing legislation that will improve the lives of the people. Currently, Zimbabwe's hyperinflation rate is the highest in the world, three mm -hmm. digits, over 600 you never see measures being introduced to improve people's lives. We've got a broken public health system. Uh, the, the education system is crippled, and yet it used to be the envy uh, of the continent. Uh, you've got a situation where civil servants are earning basically 20 US dollars a month. Uh, police officers are earning about 12 dollars a month. Uh, the, the whole country is on its knees in terms of mass suffering. Uh, the World Bank reports that 49 percent of Zimbabweans live in extreme poverty. You never hear this government introducing legislation or policy interventions to deal with that crisis. All they're interested in, all they use their muscle for is to silence the citizens, uh, to, to uh, repress uh, uh, and shrink the democratic space. And we're saying that on the third to an end uh, by decisively all right. Well, Fadzai, thank you so much for speaking to us this evening. And I understand it does come at some personal risk. We will, I'm sure, be in touch in the coming weeks in the run-up to Zimbabwe's election. Thank you so much for your time this evening. Now, Advocate Fadzai Mahere is a constitutional lawyer. She's also the spokesperson for the Citizens' Coalition for Change political party, talking about that new law, the Patriotic Act, which basically outlaws anyone from speak in, uh, in Zimbabwe speaking publicly in criticism of the government. Um, so that's really worrying in terms of campaigning ahead of the election. Let's